strippers, otters, and last week there was that little run-in with the Department of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Are you trying to get me fired or just arrested? Look, the sex and nudity things were isolated incidences, freak accidents. And as for the ATF, I already told you, I have no idea how Lava Man got his hands on a case of grenades for that segment. I mean, he probably had a point. He does talk about the power of fire. Was one of his points that we need a better insurance policy? Or are you planning to repair that bathroom yourself? Look, it was only one grenade. Honestly, how much damage could it have done? Good question. As soon as your cameraman gets out of the hospital, let's ask him, shall we? And while you're at it, would you get him to sign something that says he's not going to sue us into oblivion? Aren't you going to tell Mikey when to switch with you? This is standard stuff. Mikey knows when to make the cuts. I'm a little busy talking about grenades, lawyers, and bathrooms. Carry on. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Mikey run the show now? Are you sure that grenade didn't give you a lobotomy? Relax. Mikey is a pro. Mikey is the one who cut to stripper sans apparel. She's also the person responsible for certain otter-related titles. And if I'm not mistaken, wasn't the whole, hey, let's use a grenade as a cherry bomb notion another one of her bright ideas? I shouldn't fire you. I should fire her. No, wait. I should fire you both. No wonder the networks bumped you misfits to midnight. It's so exciting to be here. I've read all your books. You're the best. Thanks. That's so sweet of you. So tell me, how did you use the principles of divine benevolence to land your dream job? Well, I haven't exactly landed it just yet. Oh. But I'm sure I will soon. Everything is going great! Okay, uh, so tell us about your approach. Sure. Every day, since I got fired from my last job. And you know, I really don't think that East Coast power failure was all my fault. They should really label those buttons better. Anyway, since then, I've been practicing meditation and visualization to find my dream job. So before you start looking at the help wanted ads, you visualize the perfect job. And then before the interview, you meditate on success, tap into the cosmic power that connects us all, and see it going exactly the way you want it to, right? <laughs> well, I haven't exactly been on any interviews yet. You haven't? Why not? No one's called me. Really? You mean nobody returns your calls when you answer the ads? <laughs> oh no, I don't look at ads or make calls or stuff like that. I just meditate. You're not calling employment agencies or looking at the help wanted ads? <laughs> no, silly. <laughs> I just meditate all day like you say in your book. I know that before too long, my phone will be ringing off the hook with my dream job just waiting for me. It's so exciting! Right, um, exciting. Well, thanks for joining us today. Uh, ab about that, <clears throat> I really think they should reconsider giving us our old time slot back. I mean, we have millions of viewers. We must be doing something, right? People are, uh, fascinated? <laughs> People are fascinated with train wrecks, too. But it doesn't make the conductor's job any easier. The only thing the network cares about is advertising revenue. We have sponsors. You have a revolving door of sponsors. We can't keep them for more than a show or two because you people scare the hell out of them. They're just not matching us up with the right kind of advertisers. I mean, honestly. Bass fishing lures? Have you forgotten that you work for a huge gazillion dollar corporation? There's only one right kind of advertiser. The kind with money. And yours isn't sticking around to get us any. That's why they're canceling your show after the season. They're canceling the show? Are you nuts? It's just not profitable. They're canceling the show? 
Oh my God. We have millions of viewers. That's millions of eyes and millions of ears times two. Or four. I, I don't know. I was never any good at math. Or anatomy. Eyes and ears do not get ambitious producers promoted to the executive suite. Money does. And your show isn't helping. And you say you just haven't had any luck landing your dream job. Nah, man. None at all. But I know that if I'm persistent, that sooner or later I'll get there, just like you say. That's the spirit. So, what kind of feedback have you been getting so far? Well, I keep trying to get interviews, but they all say that I don't have the education or the experience that they're looking for. So, what kind of job is it that you're going for? Neurosurgeon. Brain surgery. Yeah, dude. I think operating on people's brains would be so cool. Yes, that is indeed one of the cooler careers. Where did you go to med school? I didn't go to med school. You mean you haven't graduated yet? No, no, I mean I haven't started yet. So, you're still in college then, right? No, I didn't go to college. See, I dropped out of high school to play in a band, so college just never seemed to make sense to me. You didn't graduate high school? Yeah, but I got my GED, though. It took me four tries, but I stuck with it, just like you say in your DVDs, and eventually they passed me. And now you're looking for a job as a neurosurgeon. Without college or med school, you do know that might be a little difficult. Yeah, but it's just like you say in your books, man. Prosperity is all about knowing how to market yourself. So I just got to get better at it, right? Absolutely. And I know just what you need. With this amazing DVD course, which happens to be on sale this week... Okay, I get it. The company wants money. You want a promotion. But we're the ones getting screwed here. You may think that we're misfits, but people love this show. It's those marketing guys that aren't getting it done. Oh, you should fire them, not us. Hey, I'm married to one of those marketing guys, and I don't want to be the only one paying the bills. I've got it. It's all about the money, right? Something about bears and the woods comes to mind. So if our sponsors were bringing in enough money, they wouldn't cancel the show, right? If your sponsors were bringing in enough money, I'd already be in the executive washroom and you'd be some other producer's problem. Tell her to watch out for the grenades. Those executives are ruthless. Not helping. Sorry. Then how about this? We start getting our own sponsors. Ones that appreciate the kind of audience that we draw to them. You give us a number to reach, we hit that number, and you don't cancel the show. Deal? <laughs> you really don't want to know the number. I'm a dangerous man. I've got nothing to lose. And you still know where the rest of the grenades are. Okay, you're on. You have the rest of the season to bring your numbers up. If you do, I'll make sure they keep you alive. But you better hope this gets me a promotion, because one more season with you, and I'll be the one shopping for grenades. Savvy? Yeah, I got it. Thanks. You know as much about marketing as Cosmic Gypsy Girl knows about rocket science. Uh, true, but I know something even more valuable. What's that? Your husband likes 12-year-old scotch and pharmaceuticals of a dubious medicinal value. And I've got friends in low places. You're going to ask him to help us? Oh, don't be silly. He's in marketing. No. I'm going to bribe him into helping us. And if that doesn't work? Then I'm going to blackmail him into helping us. David, that's not very nice. Neither is unemployment, wouldn't you agree? He also likes imported caviar. I have some friends I can call him. That's the spirit. Ah, oh, crap! Mikey, no! But Kat said to cut to the interview as soon as he finished speaking. Mm, they're not set up for the interview. The cameraman's in the bathroom taking a leak. Oh, I thought it was another bathroom thing. Jeez, how much has this guy had to drink today? He should really remember to turn that camera off.